The day is a really important day as we head to Westminster to yet again try and push forward access for medical cannabis. This month we'll see five years since medical cannabis has been legalised in the UK, but still patients do not have access. Still patients' only route is through private clinics like ourselves and able to get access. So today we're meeting MPs from across the House to try and move legislation forwards and access the medical cannabis. So I'll take you all on the ride now and let's see how the day goes. Hi there, we're going to Westminster please. So the reason I got involved um, in medical cannabis was a personal reason, um, through my daughter Georgia. Uh, Georgia was born with a really rare chromosome deletion and from that chromosome deletion she suffered a severe form of epilepsy. So doctors came to the foot of Georgia's bed in intensive care and told me that Georgia was going to die. That set me off on a course to find a solution for Georgia and that's why I first discovered medical cannabis. I see medical cannabis successfully being used right across the world um, in treating epilepsy and indeed treating such a wide range of conditions. Unfortunately in the United Kingdom at that time, medical cannabis was illegal to be prescribed, so no doctor could write a prescription for what Georgia needed. So I joined forces with other parents and we decided let's force the government to change the law and give people access to medical cannabis in the United Kingdom. And that's what we did. Successfully, five years ago, this month, we changed the law and medical cannabis became legal in the United Kingdom. Of course, that was brilliant and it meant children like Georgia could get access. Georgia is now seven years old. She's a happy, thriving child. But the problem is, we're five years later and the only way people are getting access is still privately. That isn't good enough. The NHS must be able to provide patients with access. We must be able to open up access in the UK and the government must do more to support this. So the idea of today is we get MPs from right across the house to meet with us and be able to talk and be able to explain what we're doing down at our clinic. We're able to explain the type of patients that we see on a regular basis because this just doesn't affect people with epilepsy, it affects people with such a wide range of conditions right through from people living with chronic pain conditions right through to people living with uh, conditions like cancer. Medical cannabis has been known to help so many different people and that's why we must help people get access to this amazing medication. Hey Adam. I didn't even recognise you, you look far too. <laughs> this is uh, one of our main patients Adam. You know, one of the first patients. Yeah, he's, he's, actually, the, he's actually the only um, patient to be um, reimbursed by the NHS. So, uh, the first of many I hope. I yeah. hope so. Yeah. Yeah. But this is what we have to get better, we have to get more patients through that system. Yeah. Um, so what we're going to do is we're really going to start focusing on um, a set of patients first to try and pull them through. So we're looking at um, cancer patients as a person that we want yep. to start pulling through yep. and being able to do that. I and suppose both that. in the context of the seriousness of the ailment yep. and the relative cost of treating it exactly. to the therapeutic effects. Pain yeah. relief, it kind of fits, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And we were just discussing there, like all the other benefits to taking the medical cannabis. So when it, you know, with the cancer, not only are you getting it for the nausea, and that side was what prescribed for. I think what would be really helpful now I see from a, a government perspective is, as you've always said, the government actually have been very good. They actually have always supported what, we, what we've been doing moving forward. But I think what, what needs to happen is there's this disjointed bit from the NHS, the government, and what has happened is it's went back and forth for ages where the NHS are blaming the government. The government are going, no, we have made this legalised. People need to get access. We don't understand what's going on and we're continuing in that loop for five years now. That's the other thing Robin, um, I love Robin because of um, the, the work he's done in this area, but that's the, that's the other thing is that again the medical trials, wider trialling, yeah. um, wider research, which then again enables in a way, it enables the government to be able to say well it's a, yeah, or MHRA to say well it's a, it's a no brainer. Yeah. So it makes sense. Um, we've been doing it. <laughs> yeah. Here at the event, um, at Port Collis House, meeting with various different MPs, meeting with different activists, different patients. Um, it's been really good. I've, I've met with Mike, who became the first patient in the UK um, to get his uh, medical cannabis prescription covered um, by the NHS, which is obviously fantastic um, uh, for, for, for his condition. 
and that's that's something now that we're passionate about. Mike's a patient of ours at George Emerson Centre, and we have some, you know, hearing his story today, telling me how happy he is, has made me extremely happy today. Um, getting ideas, pulling together with MPs, of just sat and talked with uh, uh, Ronnie Cohen and Adam Afray, where we were able to try and come up with an idea how we can bring it up this into the house, where we can show Mike's case and say the NHS are now covering a cancer patient in this area. Well, why are cancer patients in other areas not being covered? That's what we need to work on. That's what we need to approve. And if we can step by step, another door open, then we'll move forwards. But the day's been really good, really successful, and I look forward to chatting to more people. And that's what we need to see. Like, why, is, why do we have a postcode lottery where well, a cancer patient in Scotland can't get access to it? But yet we have a, a cancer patient here. That's, been, that's not right. We are talking about high quality, well designed, real world. Yeah, no, definitely. Studies. Yeah. Then you can incorporate yeah. the daily practice. Yeah, because we run we run clinical trials for uh, all other medications. Yeah. So we run because we have our own uh, lab on site. Yeah. So we do all genetic sequencing. We do full blood works. We have our own CRO team on the site. So, so we have all that all in house. It's a big company. There. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So we have yeah just one area in Canada. So we have five different entities that are all under Georgia Healthcare Group. So if you see in the back of the card there, so we've got like Living Room Health, George Emerson Center. Um, we have London Lab, Georgia with the technology side of the business as well, Georgia Tech. Um, so yeah, it all comes under then the, the Georgia Healthcare brand. So, yeah. We can say like we do a, a pay monthly to give patients um, option to do it. So it's like nineteen pound fifty or something we charge a month for to give patients access. To, and that includes all their uh, consultations that they need. That includes all their repeat prescriptions. That's everything. All in clinical trials is something that massive to me and why we try and move that forwards. I've said many times I'll 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 match fund whatever they're doing in the trials we'll push stuff forwards if they actually come in to do stuff. We've just finished the event here um, at Westminster. Really successful event, speaking to lots of various different MPs about the issues still faced with medical cannabis and how we have to still try and move this forwards. We are getting there slowly but surely come up with a few different ideas, especially around cancer patients and how we can try and help that at the clinic. We've also been talking about medical trials and how we can support that at the clinic as well. So all in all, a really successful event and looking forward to the follow-up conversation. You know, today and in, in, in this month, as I say, is, is celebrating the fact of medical cannabis being available um, in the United Kingdom and, and that law changing. But as we have talked about today, unfortunately for a lot of people, medical cannabis is still very, very expensive. So at the clinic, we have decided to try and do our best to try and help patients. So we are now offering anybody can switch clinics from their current clinic um, for £99. And that gives people a year's um, their consultations for the year, including all their repeat prescriptions for that one annual fee. So that's that, you know, I'm passionate about trying to do what we can do to try and help patients and that's what we're all about and at the clinic we're now offering that for the month of November to try and help people um, that we know during this cost of living crisis every penny helps. <laughs>